Hello, everyone. I'm Sybil Starr, and I'm here to give the astrology forecast for the Sagittarius new moon that is occurring on November uh, 30th at 10.21 p.m. Pacific time. Well, I'm going to start first with just showing you the chart of um, of the new moon, the astrology chart of the new moon. All right. All right. So here we go. All right, so what we have here, okay, the Sagittarius new moon occurs on November 30th uh, here on the West Coast now is going to occur on December 1st in, let's see, well, pretty much, uh, I'm going to say um, only east of here. Okay, so the central time zone, eastern time zone, Europe, mo uh, much of the world, it will occur on December 1st. Uh, at, but here is 10 in the West Coast, 10, 10, 21 p.m. Pacific time and Santa Rosa. All right. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> so we've got the sun and the moon here at nine degrees, 32 minutes of Sagittarius. It is opposite the part of fortune, which, excuse me, the part of earth that I am now using because I feel like it is very significant because the part of earth has to do with what we are giving form to, uh, bringing to earth. And so it's at nine degrees, 32 minutes of Gemini. Now the sun is, uh, the sun and moon are in a square to Saturn. And I'm going to say a wide opposition to Jupiter. Saturn is here at 12 degrees of Pisces, 54 minutes. And it's in a wide opposition to Jupiter at 17 degrees, nine minutes. But one of the reasons I would include it is because Jupiter is the traditional ruler of Sagittarius. Now, we also have Mercury at 20 degrees of Sagittarius, uh, 20 degrees, 20 minutes, and it is retrograde and uh, will be turned retrograde on the 26th of November. And um, let's see, we'll go direct. I have that date further down in the reading. I don't remember it offhand. Anyway, it, Mercury is also in a much tighter opposition to Jupiter. Okay, so that's those are very significant aspects. We also have um, Pluto has just moved into re, returned to Aquarius, where he will be until um, what is it, March twenty twenty three, or excuse me, twenty twenty. 2043. Excuse me. All right. He'll be there till 2043 and is in an opposition to Mars. Mars is at five degrees, 57 minutes of um, Leo. Mars is going to go retrograde on December 6th uh, at six degrees of Leo and then <clears throat> go back. And so it's really going to be opposing within range of, of opposing Pluto all the whole month of December. Okay. All right. Mars is also in a grand tr a fire trine uh, with the sun and the moon here in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the uh, last, the third fire sign. Uh, trine the north node, which is the way forward. Trine Mars. Okay. So it also makes a kite with uh, the North Node, of course, opposite the South Node and Mars opposite Pluto. But I'm going to really focus more on the Grand Trine aspect because I think that's a very important aspect. Okay. All right. Let's see. Is there anything else here? I don't think so. All right. Okay. All right. So here we go. What does all of this mean? So first off, let's just talk about the Sagittarius archetype. So the Sagittarius archetype is the archetype of the seeker, the gypsy, and the philosopher. Sagittarius is on a quest for the meaning of life through adventure, different kinds of journeys, inner and outer, cross-cultural experiences, theology, any of the different ways we expand our consciousness, um, Sagittarius has to do with. Now, Sagittarius actually rules the ninth house, and the ninth house used to be called uh, the house of journey, uh, long journeys over water. So it was about travel. And so it's the different ways we travel is what Sagittarius represents. It's the desire to reach out to the world and connect with something larger than ourselves. 
Sagittarius increases our understanding and awareness of the world around us, especially after we've gone through this deep inner journey into Scorpio. Scorpio is so much about the deep inner journey and self-healing. So it's like after we've had the inner journey, then we're ready to explore the world because we've been transformed by that inner journey. It Sagittarius helps us increase our horizons and branch out into new ways of thinking. Uh, it's ruled by Jupiter. And with that, we can gain more confidence and optimism by focusing on the big picture. As we move away, our focus from the details of mundane existence and our emotional world. Okay, we have the opportunity to nurture our faith, hope, and vision under this influence. The shadow is being overextended, lack of focus, and known to have what is called uh, open mouth insert foot syndrome. I don't know that that's really a shadow. It's really a trait. It's just Sagittarius is known for being blunt, just kind of saying what it is. Uh, but they also have the ability to say, th to blurt things out that maybe aren't necessarily need to be said. Or sometimes they absolutely do need to be said, and it's the only way they come out. Okay. All right. Now, this uh, new moon is conjunct a very um, powerful fixed star called Antares. And it's at 10 degrees, um, six mi minutes of Sagittarius. This is a red supergiant which is often mistaken for Mars. When you see a red, really red planet in the sky, you, or when you see a really red object in the sky, um, it may be Antares or it may be Mars. It just depends because they, they can be mistaken for each other. This is a, uh, and it, but it is in the heart of the constellation of Scorpius. It's called the heart of the scorpion. It is called a royal star of Persia. And there was a belief among the Persians that there were four primary stars that uh, held up the heavens. And several, many thousands, several, not many, uh, several thousand years ago, these stars were actually very uh, close to the, um, the cardinal points, the um, equinoxes and the solstices. Now they are not, but they once were. And they're associated with different archangels. And so your um, Antares is associated with Archangel Uriel, who is the god of light or wisdom. And this is an angel star. And so when I look at people's galactic charts, if they have this star prominent, it often indicates there is some connection to the angelic realm. Antares is called the Watcher of the West. Uh, and to the Persians, the star was the god of the dead. This star, like all royal stars, it brings great success, worldly or otherwise. But each of these royal stars have with a nemesis. And they can cause people, those who carry them, indicates that one can be the cause of their own undoing through obsession. Okay. Or I would just say in this time where you don't have to carry this star in your chart, you could absolutely, if it is prominent, it could indicate that we could be our own undoing through our own obsessions. The general theme of this star uh, is to generate success by going through a cleansing life or death experience. It can indicate that one seeks intensity, even when it is not required. It indicates extremes, whether by choice or not. Now, on another completely level, that was information from Bernadette Brady. Now, on another level, they, they're very highly advanced beings that live, uh, that are... Um, and that are from the star system of Antares. And the ant people, the red ant people are uh, the beings from Antares. It is the home of higher dimensional entities, both physical and non-physical. Although my understanding is it is mainly non-physical. They live in the higher frequency dimensions up to the ninth dimension. It's an, but the, one of the most important things, it's, it's also like a, um, a school for advanced healing. They have a school for really advanced healing there, and they're also warriors of light. 
Okay, so it is an important gateway to other galaxies and universes. Some souls upon uh, incarnation choose to pass through the Antares gateway to activate soul memory. And as I said, they are the red ant people. And they many believe it is th these are the same ant people that led the Hopi uh, underground during the great flood and took care of them while they were underground and then led them back out. Okay. Now, this star is also called the Golden Gate. It is one of the gateways for those who are leaving the cycles of, of reincarnation here on Earth, that they, they're, they're moving on to other, other dimensions, other uh, galaxies, other star systems, wherever they're going, but they are leaving the reincarnational cycle here on Mother Earth. <clears throat> and... Um, it's also a gateway for many other higher dimensional beings to enter into our, our uh, level of reality here. Okay. And one last thing, Antares is known to be a stargate to the Andromeda galaxy. Antares was created to be a star portal that connected the Andromeda galaxy to the Milky Way galaxy. Through this portal, many etheric beings from the Andromeda galaxy uh, have come here to begin a new cosmic experimentation in a more physical reality. Beings from the Andromeda galaxy bring a new perspective and with it a new paradigm. And here's some information from Lisa Royal Holt. It is the souls from the Andromeda galaxy who are bringing in the new paradigm which is more in alignment with our true nature, a fluid state of integration in constant change and evolution. They teach us to create an anchor to reality based in our own consciousness rather than on the outside world. True reality is more aligned with the state of pure consciousness and changes as a reflection of the observer. It is a reality of constant change and it and as things and the our outer reality is reflected back to us now we already know this is true but we live in a more stable reality where things don't change instantly or constantly uh, on a scale that we can um, be aware of that we have awareness of but yet it, this is what the Andromedans are coming to teach us and to have more control over it by being in our, um, well, the word isn't really control. The word is being able to flow with the changes and know that the outer world is reflecting those back to us. Okay. It is this paradigm that will allow us to space travel. It is not just outer technology, but the elevation of our consciousness that will make this possible. When our reality is centered within us, it doesn't matter what is happening in the outside world. That's basically what this is saying. All right. Now, it's also opposite the part of Earth uh, and the star Aldebaran at 10 degrees, 8 minutes of Gemini. Uh, Antares and Gemini, are, excuse me, Antares and Aldebaran are always opposite each other. Now, uh, Aldebaran, like I said, it's conjunct the part of Earth, which is about what we're bringing form to. So it's, it's very significant. And Aldebaran is known as the eye of the bull or the eye of revelation. It is a star of enlightenment. And it is a, also a royal star of Persia. And this one is uh, associated with Archangel Michael, who is the warrior of light and protector. Uh, Aldebaran is known as the Watcher of the East and associated with Spring Equinox. When Aldebaran is strong, it can indicate one will gain respect, success, and reputation for honesty at all costs, but one will face moral dilemmas which will challenge one's integrity. And if one steps out of integri integrity, it will be one's uh, self undoing. So this is a very uh, significant star, but it's about, it's all about staying in alignment with our own integrity and it brings great success when we do. Okay. And so the beings from Al Aldebaran, they also have a civilization. They are said to come from Lyra and many are feline beings. 
Aldebaran has a very strong cosmic leadership school in our galaxy. Now, Aldebaran is also believed to be the home of what is called the Silver Gate Portal, which is the entrance point for souls traveling to or reincarnating back to Earth. This is one of the gates where we enter Earth uh, as part of our reincarnational cycle. Okay, And as souls travel through the Silver Gate Portal, they are bathed in the protective light of Aldebaran before making their way into their new incarnation. Aldebaran is part of the Stargate to Andromeda, along with Antares. And it is a strong star, star seed marking, especially for those coming from the Andromeda galaxy. Okay. All right. Uh, we've got this new moon square Saturn in Pisces. And so, you know, as we talked about, we talked about many times, you know, squares are challenges. They really push us. Uh, it's kind of like, uh, it can almost be compulsive until we, um, you know, until we do or whatever it is that we're being pushed to do or be. Okay. So in a square to Saturn can bring up fear and limitation. It is where our where we have a growth edge and where we need to look at our fear and to come to the understanding that fear resides in the mind and what old thoughts and beliefs are holding you back. When, with Saturn, it is often fear of change. Okay, The need for safety and security is based in the ego out of fear. The elevation, when we elevate our consciousness, it brings us out of fear-based choices that are resistant to change into higher frequency dimensions where we realize that we are constantly creating our reality. Okay. All right. And that's what it's about. Knowing that we can change everything just where we focus our thoughts. Okay. And of course, the emotion behind them. We are being challenged to change our perspective and embrace change as we step into unknown territory. So it's about stopping, it's about stopping the attempt to control your reality because the old world is collapsing with the new one being born and old solutions and ways of being no longer work change is the name of the game right now. And it's very, you know, the, everything that has made us feel safe and secure is changing because we are being pushed out of our comfort zone. And that is why it is so important to trust your inner guidance, but the square can also bring self doubt and to know this is all in your mind to drop down. If you're feeling any self-doubt or not trusting yourself, drop into your heart because your heart knows the truth. Your mind is what can lead you astray. Trust your, drop into your heart and trust the process. Although Saturn also does say to use discernment as to what is true and what is illusion. And so that's kind of the, the, you know, I would say the, the kind of the, the sticky point, but I, your, your heart will know what is true and what is illusion. Yes. Okay. And to know that our response to every situation is a choice. Now we have Saturn square Jupiter. They're going to be, have their last exact meetup um, in about the middle of the month here. Um, and, but they're, they're as well, no, it's not their last one. They're going to have one last one in the spring, but this will be the second one where they meet. Um, and so the new moon and the new moon is widely opposite Jupiter. So I feel like what this is telling is showing us, it's about a loss of belief in ourselves and that to believe that something outside of ourselves knows what is best for us. It's about reclaiming trust in our inner guidance, but we need to slow down to be able to really listen. It can also bring with it a loss of faith that the universe is benevolent and loving. So it's reclaiming our faith there as well. Remembering not only is the universe benevolent and loving, but we are the universe. There really is no separation. It's really about healing that separation uh, uh, from source, 
feeling like we are separate from source. This is a big piece in it, but we need to look at those own places in our heart where we've lost the faith that that, where we've come to believe false have false beliefs around this. We have never left the source of all creation. We are an ex- and we are an expression of Mother Earth as cre- as the source of all creation. All right, and one of the last things is this is this Saturn and Jupiter together often bring about manifestation. And so I learned a really um, a really helpful analogy <laughs> uh, because we know that, you know, it is our thoughts with our emotions behind them that, uh, that it is about as how we create. And so the analogy was thoughts are like the vehicle while emotions are like the fuel that actually drives the vehicle. Okay. And so everything is created from a baseline of frequency that pulses out into the universe and is reflected back to us. It's like we can say an affirmation and put that thought out there, but unless it is really backed up with the emotion, it's not going to do that much because it is the underlying emotion that the universe reflects back. So that is the key. So it's important to work to change the inner frequency. If you are not living in a way you prefer, and it is a choice how you feel like, you know, we've shared, I've shared many times, you know, an emotion lasts a very short time, anywhere from 90 seconds. And some people say 20 minutes, but it's, it doesn't last long. And any suffering after that is the story around it. It is our thoughts. And so how we change our emotion is to change how we think about it. Okay, that's one of the ways. And so, so um, because it, it is a choice how we feel. You know, I used to have a bumper sticker that says, I, ch- I, I choose to be happy because it helps my health. Okay, it is good for my health. I choose to be happy because it is good for my health. And to know that is really, it's really true. We can wake up a day and we can choose how we're going to feel that day. That does, and it doesn't, and and that doesn't mean the day is going to go well. Um, or put it this way, it doesn't mean that we may not have challenges, but we can always choose how we respond to them. Number one, and number two, um, I was given this example um, by Wendy Kennedy, who channels the Pleiadians, and I really liked what she said. She said, "If you want to feel empowered." You could say, I want to feel empowered or joyful or have inner peace or whatever I'm going to do, whatever, however I want to feel. And then say to ourselves, I wonder what feeling empowered would feel like. I wonder what feeling joyful would feel like. And then allow yourself to feel that emotion, to explore it, to kind of just, you know, really move into how that could feel, how you could feel empowered. And it might, you might feel empowered all day. Okay. But that is the real driver of manifestation. All right. Now we also have Mercury. Uh, Mercury is retrograde. Uh, Mercury is retrograde from uh, November 26th until December 7th from 22 degrees of Sagittarius to six degrees of Sagittarius. All right. And Mercury is also opposite Jupiter. So when Mercury is in Sagittarius, our mind becomes more imaginative and explorative. Our communication more colorful and engaging. Our perspective of the world broadens and we start to see the world through the Sagittarian lens of possibilities and adventures. Now, of course, you know, uh, Mercury is retrograde. And um, so, of course, all of the normal cautions apply to just, you know, be aware. It's not a good time to start a project. If you don't have to, if you have to, you have to. Um, and to know sometimes communications can get lost. People won't, don't get back to you, uh, because the truth of it is Mercury goes retrograde every, what is it? Three weeks, um, for three weeks, three times a year. And it's usually when we have gotten ahead of ourselves. I mean, it's about slowing down, finishing up projects, rethinking, reevaluating. And I feel like in Sagittarius, it's about reevaluating our perspective of life, how we view our world, our worldview. 
Okay. And the opposition to Jupiter encourages us to explore big ideas and fresh possibilities while the square to Saturn will keep us in check. Is it realistic? This is a great time to question assumptions, view situations from new perspectives and arrive at better solutions. And, you know, I am going to bring up, you know, the election here, you know, it is time, I believe, to get a new perspective. It's the uh, and to really focus on what could go right, not everything that could go wrong. Mercury in Sagittarius is concerned with our long term goals um, and helping us align with our true vision. Uh, the old paradigm is crumbling and with it, new opportunities present themselves if we can trust and let go of fear. New ways of viewing reality are showing themselves and instead of viewing, like I said, the world in terms of what could go wrong, let us, let us view the world and what can go right as we live in a field of infinite possibilities and miracles. And, you know, things, our reality is changing and the way things, solutions from the past and the way we have approached the world in the past, many of those no longer work. So we need to open up to new ways of being and doing things. I love this quote here. It says, some people look for errors and mistakes while others look for beauty and inspiration, and we usually find what we are looking for. And know that when we can change our perspective, we change our reality. All right. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go into Pluto, into Aquarius. And Pluto is in an opposition to Mars. Um, but Pluto re-entered Aquarius on November 19th and will be there until March of 2023. And here's some of the things um, that I see about Pluto in Aquarius. Like I said, it's a long, it's a long event. And I feel like it's the, it's the last outer planet to go into Aquarius. And it puts us a, a bigger leap into the energy of the age of Aquarius. But so Pluto in Aquarius has to do with awakening to authenticity. You know, Aquarius is very much about uh, awakening and Pluto is about authenticity. Pluto in Aquarius encourages us to shed old identities and societal expectations. It's a time to step into your truest self, free from fear of judgment or conformity. And absolutely, it's about releasing judgment. This is a big piece of, uh, of how, uh, this is about big piece of soul healing. And Pluto is always about soul healing, okay? It is a revolution of consciousness. Pluto says evolve or repeat. Many souls are choosing to evolve and grow. Uh, and, and that is through the release, release of judgment and self-forgiveness, integration of shadow material. And I just heard a really um, interesting description of, of shadow material. And because it is about the integration of dark and light and the, the dark is about where I feel like it's where we have trauma, where we're holding trauma. But the way it was described in uh, kind of more the outer world was terms of service to self. And whereas the light is where we remember the oneness. And so it is once again, it is about the, the integration of dark and light is allowing the remembrance of, that we have never left the source of all creation. It's about the, sh the shadow is about our separation from source. It's where we still still feel separated from source source and the light is where we move into oneness. Okay. And Pluto is about healing that. And one of the places where we hold that is through judgment. So it's become releasing judgment, becoming whole, remembering who we are on a personal and a collective level. And the self judgment and self it's self judgment and self forgiveness that then uh, ripples out into the outer world, into all of our relations, connections, and into the world where we can release judgment and forgive others. Okay. It's about developing our own spiritual, Pluto in Aquarius is about developing our own spiritual technology and psychic gifts, as well as the use of outer technology to serve our spiritual growth. It is about the power of the group. We are much more powerful when we come together with a focused intention. 
But what is m most important is the frequency of the group. Everything is about frequency. The key is for the group to attune to the higher vibrational frequencies and why it is so important to do one's own inner work. Because if you're not doing your own inner work, um, if everyone in the group is doing their own inner work, they're going to attune to the higher frequency. Those that are not doing their own inner work are going has the potential to fall to the lowest common denominator, which is fear. And that's when the group becomes uh, toxic. It can be a herd or mob mentality. Okay. So that's why it's so important. And I, I love this quote. It says, when a complex system is far from equilibrium, small islands in a sea of chaos have the capacity to shift an entire system to a higher order. So it is, and it's, let's, you know, that's why group work is so powerful. So when we come together um, and we are all on a, on a high frequency resonance, we can shift in the bigger world. We can shift things in the bigger world. We actually have influence. Okay. Um, and to know that we can move mountains when we come together in the same resonant field, we can move mountains. And in that field, then that field can be love or fear. So our job is to remain in a field of love. And it is very much about the power of the group, but it's about the power of the people. Aquarius has a lot to do with the common people. And, um, and, and, and to know this is what the ultimate, one of the core meanings of Pluto in Aquarius is to me, is the common people, is the power of the people. And of course, the shadow can be heard or mob mentality. And to realize that artificial intelligence is not good or bad, but it is the intention and the consciousness behind it, because it is a reflection of our own consciousness. So it is how we use it and to not be afraid of it, but to just be really aware when we are using it or how it is being used. OK. All right. Pluto in Aquarius is opposite Mars in Leo. Leo uh, Mars will be going retrograde on uh December 6th until February 17th, but it's, but the Mars Pluto opposition in Aquarius and Leo, um, are, uh, in effect, all through the month of December, I would say. And we start the new year with it. It's very tightly opposite on the, um, on January 1st. All right. So anyway, what is Mars in Leo? Okay. So Mars, of course, is the warrior. He's about passion and our direction in life our desire nature. Mars also represents our egoic or free will and, how, and, and what we choose to take action on. Okay. And so what this Mars in Leo also says to me, it's about having courage. Mars always brings in courage. It's the warrior. So is, we have to face our fears. And this is about having the courage to let your light shine. It is really how we light up the world when we let our own light shine. Mars in Leo brings a surge of bold energy, lighting up every part of life. This cosmic shift boosts our confidence, courage, and motivation, pushing us to go after what really matters with passion. It's about following your passion, what makes you come alive feeling the blood coursing through your veins. Uh, Mars um, aligns really well with Leo's charismatic energy, creating a powerful force that encourages us to uh, chase our dreams, speak our truth, and dive into new experiences without hesitation. It brings out creativity uh, because we really need to, as we are in this changing world, the creative ideas are pouring in. We just need to capture them so that we can know what to take action on. And Mars and Leo is very much about a warrior of light. And we need a warrior of light like Michael, like Archangel Michael using his sword of truth uh in the as we're healing the darkness which we, we would call the service to self and separation from source energies where our trauma is held and to heal that but we you know the light heals it when we bring something to light is when we can heal it okay when it stays in the darkness it just festers okay like you know wounds you know wounds need light when we have sores on our body the light heals them often quicker than almost anything okay all right, now uh, it's opposite Pluto in Aquarius. 
And so Mars and Pluto, any aspect of them dancing together, the major aspects, I would say, um, is a very powerful force. And it's the kind of energy that can move mountains, okay? And, uh, and as Mars is our free will choice, um, Mars as our free will choice can often take us off track. Uh, you know, we've often made choices that are not really in our highest good, but we want it for whatever reason. There's an underlying desire or motivation that uh, pulls us off track. And let's just say the Mars Pluto can, can take us there as well. It's a very powerful energy. The important thing is to understand our deeper motivations and what it is we think we want and what we're willing to do to get it. OK, because in the um, in the the Crowley Tarot, Mars and Scorpio, which is very similar to Mars and Pluto dancing together, it is the five of cups, the disappointment card. And so Mars and Scorpio, excuse me, Mars and Pluto together has that strong desire nature. The key is to be able to align our free will choice, our egoic will with divine will. Pluto is really trying to show us what is divine will. I mean, what is, and divine will is our soul plan. Okay. Um, and it can bring power struggles, especially the opposition can bring power struggles and a clash of wills when we are out of alignment. And so if you're having a clash of wills with someone, really look and see what it's really about. What is the underlying issue? Because uh, uh, when we're having issues with others, they're often mirroring back to us something we need to see about ourselves. OK, maybe it's a desire to do something that's really not in your highest good, but you really want it and you're willing to do anything to get it and feel like this person is standing in your way where the truth of it is, it's an aspect of your higher self showing you that maybe you need to to rethink this. OK, and uh, this aspect calls us to be authentic. But when you are in right alignment, you can move mountains when this really is in your highest good. OK, this aspect calls us to be authentic and true to ourselves and choose what is in our highest good. Don't let the opinion of others block you. Aquarius asks, how long have I sacrificed at the altar of approval of others? It's about balancing the needs of the self with the needs of the collective. And that might be another where is the issue may be that there is, you know, it, it, it may be that feeling a lack of self-sovereignty due to the needs of the collective. And so where is the balance between the two? Okay. Uh, it's about shining our light into the darkness. And when we do, the chaos will create order and a new world when our minds are aligned with our hearts. Okay. And of course, Pluto is still is this whole year from now until uh, sometime in 2026, Pluto is going to be conjuncting the stars or activating aligned with the stars of Aquila, the Eagle. Um, and it's uh, these stars are asking us to be bold and courageous to fly into the storm so that we can rise above it. And the way we stay above it is to keep our vibration high. It's also about healing, hearing the celestial call of our soul mission. It's, it's like, you know, everybody is being asked to stand up now as we move it to be able to make this shift happen and to hear and to know what are, what is your calling in life? Because now is the time to act upon it. Okay. Now with Mars retrograde, uh, like I said, it goes retrograde on December 6th until February 17th at, and it goes retrograde at six degrees of Leo. And so Mars, you know, there's Mars is, uh, in Leo is a very fiery kind of an energy, very passionate. You can just see the flames, you know, but when it goes retrograde, it goes, it's more inner focused. And so it's more of a slow bake. So it's not an explosion of fire. It's more of a slow bake and, and a deep reflection on our deepest desires. What is really true for us? What is true and authentic for us? And, and it may be that we find out whatever it is we're involved in, whether it's a relationship, whether it's our work, something in our life is really not authentic and working for us anymore. So it 
it is this we're really being called to align with our deepest passion because we are creating a new world. And as we do this deep reflection, it will allow us to come in contact with our deepest desires that allow us to live a more authentic life and then make choices that align with the truth of who we are and our soul mission. All right. Now there's a grand trine with Mars in Leo. Uh, Mars and Leo is in a grand trine with the new moon and nine degrees of Sagittarius and the north node in Aries. It's a grand fire trine. There is a lot of fire and a grand fire trine brings inspiration, passion, and really um, lights a fire under our desire nature. And what's interesting too, is I'm seeing so many people, it's kind of like love is really in the air. There are so many people that are getting involved in relationships unexpectedly. Um, and so it's really wonderful to see. So that desire nature, that passion, that creativity, the juice is in the air. Okay. If we allow ourselves to follow it. Um, and of course, this Mars is, is conjunct the North Node of the United States, where it will station retrograde through most of December. So it is really leading us to a new direction in life. I feel like this Mars is aligning with our true passions, not only for each for us personally, but also for the United States. What is our true direction? What's our true North? That's what the North, the North Node is. It's true North for us. Okay. All right. Now the Sabian symbol for this uh, new moon is a theatrical representation of a golden haired goddess of opportunity. Once again, it's speaking of opportunity that the field is just ripe with opportunity, with uh, miracles, but it is also asking us to use discernment as to their truth for you the field, but is this really right for you? And, and, and the other piece is, is sometimes things are not always what they appear to be. So it's really important to be able to use discernment because, and, and to know the field is ripe with opportunity. And so in conclusion, this is a time of, uh, this is a time of potential great opportunity and possibility when we can shift our perspective and, and believe in what can go right. Uh, it's about following the light, follow the flow and believe in the benevolence of the universe and trust your inner guidance. It's a, a new world and some say a golden age is beginning to emerge, but it all depends on our inner work and the soul healing that we are doing as to what the new world will be is asking us to face your fears, ask for help and trust the process of change and shifting realities as we change our perspective, knowing that our perspective creates our perception and our perception is our reality. And to know that we are moving through uncharted territory for Mother Earth and her children, and that we really are in a world of infinite possibilities where miracles abound. All right. Well, wishing you a wonderful um, two weeks because I'll be doing it at the next video in two weeks. Anyway, wishing you a wonderful month and many blessings. And if you're interested in a reading, uh, I am going to be running a discount here shortly. I'll be putting out a uh, an advertisement. Um, and if you're interested in a reading with a discount, please contact me. The information, the, I have my information in my information box there. Um, and oh yes, if you like this video, please check like and subscribe. All right. Namaste and many blessings.